Good afternoon, I'm Daniel Miller and this is Destiny Academy. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants and everyone watching us worldwide on a variety of different platforms. Welcome to our Destiny Academy here on the channel. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being our very dedicated, very valued community members. We have lots, lots to talk about today. Um, I'll tell you all about my activities that were taking place during the weekend. And also we have quite a lot of news coming in in respect of Destiny and all other gaming activities. So without further ado, let's just crack on. So how is everyone today? Did you have a good weekend? Have you had a lot of rest? Well, obviously you can tell us uh, all about it. You can tell us what games were entertaining. I told you last week that uh, Ubisoft were giving us the entire weekend um, of Assassin's Creed for free. And there were some absolutely phenomenal games there on offer. So I'm hoping that everyone was indeed trying out some of these titles. It's not that frequent that we get that many AAA blockbusters offered free of charge. And uh, although I have the vast majority of these titles, the latest ones, and these are Valhalla, Origins and, um, and uh, Odyssey, I do not have in my library. So therefore, uh, certainly this was a good weekend for me to try Origins and Odyssey. Both games I've played in the past quite a bit uh, when offered free of charge during the freebie weekends. But Valhalla, I'm getting at the moment on Ubisoft Plus, and I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, I subscribed uh, to the uh, um, Ubisoft streaming platform, I should say, uh, on the price of one euro, one dollar, one pound, and uh, it's one pound in Britain, uh, just so to, you know to make it simple. And I'm definitely enjoying it. I've gone already down the route of playing maybe roughly 25, 30 hours, and the game is absolutely amazing. It's very immersive. It's it's lengthy. It has very many different uh, ways in which it can be played, and most I'd recommend to everyone. It's really my kind of open world stroke RPG type of uh, game that has plenty of stealth, a lot of dialogue, a lot of exploration. Um, it's a masterpiece, you know, through and through. It's just as simple as that. And I never thought that I would enjoy um, Valhalla as much uh, as I did, and I'll continue to do so. Also, the benefit if you want to join, and I've got to warn you, it's a very expensive streaming service. They don't have that many games, um, just their AAA blockbusters, uh, but it's delivered on the price of 16.99 per month, which choices you'll have. I guess the thinking behind it is quite simple. We're giving you our incredibly big games, the games which you can play for many hundreds of hours, uh, particularly the last three Assassin's Creed and also uh, Far Cry, uh, the last three installments. So we're talking about thousands of hours of gameplay um, and the idea is that this is a sort of um, 
pinnacle type of service for the completionists, for the collectors, for people kind of love getting in and then discovering all that the service has got to offer. So definitely uh, something that I have been always interested in, but I thought the price was a bit steep and uh, I'm sure that many other gamers worldwide had exactly the same sort of experience and therefore Ubisoft after the launch a few months later had decided to offer it on that trial period uh, where the price is just one pound um, or one euro, one dollar depending on where you live and um, certainly a very good opportunity for at what these games are all about and for myself the two heavyweights um, on the platform are Valhalla and uh, Far Cry 6 both games I've played in the past to a certain, I have to say i played um, Far Cry 6 a lot more than Valhalla and uh, many reasons as to why that is but uh, um, I thought that Valhalla was going to stay on PlayStation Plus or previously PlayStation Now services that I'm subscribed to and uh, unfortunately I was completely mistaken that's not happened and Valhalla was there initially when the service was launched and disappeared before Christmas of last year so there was no chance to try it and I'm actually quite glad I had not played it at the time I'll tell you why uh, I had recently uh, um, it's not even that recent in the course of this year earlier this year I, I um, managed to get uh, my brand new Xbox Series S, the state-of-the-art new-gen console, and the images, the visual quality, the sound and everything on the console are absolutely out as well, as, as they are on PlayStation 5, indeed. Possession of the console, like our friend Zenith, who's our community member here, uh, will know that uh, it's simple and simply um, it's a huge difference, really, and uh, the games that have been already adapted for the next gen usage are really truly there to deliver. In fact, just to put it in perspective, uh, I talked quite a bit about here um, uh, about Elder Scrolls Online and uh, the fact that I feel the um, online version of Elder Scrolls Universe is to a degree similar to what we have in Destiny in some areas of the structure, the concept, you know, the way the game's delivered. So I said to myself, well actually this weekend I'll pop in and have a look and uh, I want to see what's happened in the meantime since I've been um, there last and uh, the graphics are really looking absolutely amazing on Series S, much improved and you know really razor sharp and very smooth gameplay. Um, the sounds also you know, went around a bit, talked to a few characters, just, just want to get a really good flavour of it and um, I get it all fully included, um, inclusive of some of the expansions on the Game Pass. So, um, you know, if you had saved some money I would definitely recommend for you to purchase either PlayStation 5 or Series S or X because your gaming experience will be very, very greatly enhanced. You will actually have a very different, very immersive, very uh, um, kind of beautiful fantasy world to which you can explore and enjoy all the characters, the visuals, um, all the activities together with your friends. Don't forget, Destiny is a multiplayer game, Elder Scrolls Online, um, indeed, exactly the same sort of uh, online activity where you can bring in lots of your friends, relatives, you know, mates, um, colleagues to join you, and therefore such activities become very enjoyable. Diablo 4, the game came out recently is exactly the same sort of uh, online multiplayer and you will get always the very best of activities, the best of fun when you do it together with others. I mean you can obviously try it by yourself in order to uh, get away in but uh, uh, you know I find it always a bit troubling when I see people debating on Reddit and Twitter um, certain activities which actually have been built in order to be played together with others and then the soloists come in and they start preaching how for instance this is too difficult it doesn't really work or they can't use certain weapons well obviously it will not work because you're, you're trying to do I wouldn't say what is impossible because obviously somebody who's highly skilled will be able to do all sorts of things in a multiplayer but it's not really meant to be played like this you know you just I don't, I'm not quite sure what I can compare it with um, it's, it's just simply a, a sort of activity that is best um, engaged with if you are together with others. And this is what we do here every single day uh, as I stream Destiny and play. To you know, we've gone through strikes and sievers and nightfalls many, many times, but it's always interesting because the mods make it, I guess, devilish difficult at times. And with the different community members, the activity also becomes somewhat altered. Therefore, I wouldn't say that what we do here with Destiny 1 is similar 
instance to Warzone where you feel that every single match is a different game altogether due to the tactics and strategies and altogether the people you play with but um, there are also pe people you meet in the field so to speak uh, so Destiny doesn't have really that degree of um, unique replayability in my opinion um, as uh, for very many reasons and just simply this is not a military simulation game and a military simulation game there are lots of things that you can do explore and you will use different tactics weapons armor uh, gear vehicles um, jets if need be to which we are completing certain tasks and moving forward so um, a different game but definitely very very enjoyable and coming back to what I said earlier just remember if you're coming into some of these games which are massive multiplayer online um, then you know you do it together with others and set up a small channel on Twitch invite a few people in and I've had actually questions coming in recently from uh, several community members I answered some of them here live online but um, one of the best ways of becoming a full member of a, a particular community related to a specific game is by being a dedicated member of a Twitch or YouTube channel. Um, if you choose a game like Destiny that has an enormous amount of followers, or for instance Oblivion or um, Skyrim, for instance, the, the, you know, the games which have been around for a long, long while, you will always get every single day quite a few veterans just having a peek, popping in, with some other community members and making new bonds and things because obviously they, they always look for new friends who will be able to revisit the title if and when and uh, that is the best way of doing it uh, first of all it is lively it is um, very much present there live on air it's interactive you can engage with others you can talk about your own issues or you know your own experiences of, uh, of the game and connect so you don't have to play a match with anyone straight away but once you connect with them once you exchange information once you talk about things either directly or live online you are making and you're building your own community and that is what these games are for they really have this fantastic um, capacity for these communities to be built out of nothing I had questions about games like Warzone and Apex but you know um, if, if you come in and you start streaming these games um, unless you go obviously to somebody else's well-established channel you, you will need to be um, community forums like for instance on reddit you need to be a regular contributor in order to kind of build a community of people who will specifically come to watch what you do here in Apex or Warzone. Um, the reason for that is there are many streamers and uh, these are most popular games which have huge amount of uh, passing traffic and uh, also you know many streamers doing it. Therefore it's very difficult to set up a channel that would attract that audience unless being fully supported and sponsored by some sort of third party. Um, and uh, even if you're doing it through the um, kind of uh, grassroots level up you will still find it will take a bit of time so you know it's just a question of selecting the title that appears to be the best and I always said for the franchises like the series like Assassin's Creed Far Cry go for one of the older titles where not many people are streaming the title at present because you will have the regulars who are doing the latest installment or the latest chapter come in and they will ask questions they will become members of your community so that's you know it's a very simple very basic strategy but i know everyone wants to be in like in the midst of it all where the biggest the the um, most popular games like Baldur's Gate today or Diablo 4 well unless you already had a large community beforehand starting out with such title will bring you no joy in terms of your followers and your community being built quickly I guess it depends on time and effort that people spend on um, the actual work which is required for a community to be built as you've seen certainly during the last few years there are certain uh, online activities and uh, platforms that are facilitating the growth and I've got to say I, I've uh, uh, talked about this quite a bit here I was relying on my community members to uh, create clips uh, in the past we had at one time quite a few clips created here on Twitch but I think people complained that clip generator is not very good and it has a lag and it doesn't always clip uh, what you want to be watching so I mean you can obviously uh, download videos and uh, you can uh, um, then use your own 
software which you can purchase or you know get online but I think clipping on Twitch is quite simple and easy you just go to section of the stream which you want to have clipped and then you know you extract the section and then this is a very good way through which you can both I guess express support towards a particular broadcast and its community but also you can create your own selection of clips um, let's say link to certain activities that you like watching or you learn something from etc so sometimes clips could be you know, when you discuss things online, one can clip a lengthier discussion, and that can also be used as an educational tool for the people for the people to learn. Um, anyway, these are just different types of ideas, and uh, I've gone down myself to um, take time in order to produce quite a selection of clips, and I've uh, uh, I've done some shorts which were linked to our recent streams, and uh, these clips are now on my YouTube channel. They're also here on Twitch and they're also on TikTok and uh, um, I've put them also on Instagram and on Facebook. I've not gone down the route of Twitter because uh, um, well, there's some logistical issues there with, with, with you know, um, with uh, uh, the files being imported. So I've, I've just tried it uh, before um, coming live uh, here on Twitch and I wasn't too happy with the way it came across. So it looked like, I mean, if you use the automated uh, uh, service there, it doesn't really come across the way I would want it to be. So I, I still need to explore it. But you know, you can you can access the clips elsewhere. And uh, I've, I've, I just uh, posted two of these clips in here, which have gone to um, the show. Either of these, and you'll be able to see what the idea behind the whole concept is. It's just really something that is very popular at the moment, and I have seen on Instagram and TikTok there are many streamers who keep launching clips which are as short as 10 15 seconds and they sort of capture certain moments during the gameplay or certain exchanges and they're very very popular very many people like watching short clips and that is the most popular activity on the internet as it stands today and uh, people just like watching much more so than reading it's the fact you know I've had um, websites in the past that were full extensive articles I have actually one dedicated to history loads of articles that I've written on certain personalities from the history of cinema and um, you will get a very small number of people who will browse and read every article people read dedicated cinephiles and people who love watching and the vast majority would just want to see like 15 30 second clips indicating what somebody said or uh, they'll want clips from certain films or certain series they use them as memes it's just a completely different mindset you know it's not about debating and deriving uh, uh, certain conclusions from you know an interesting hybrid discussion it's all about the visuals which i think is understandable if you consider that films photography video gaming these are all very much of um, you know audiovisual types of mediums and we, we want to have that before us at all times and we want to engage with that world and also want to discover you know I guess something that really sometimes worries me is I feel the certain types of reels that I come across on TikTok and Instagram in particular they have a very uh, um, a sort of uh, a covert voyeuristic element uh, that many people subscribe to it's a bit like you know the old Victorian type who would be looking at a peephole and then observing things which perhaps are not really allowed but he really kind of relishes the opportunity uh, it's full of these kinds of clips and you know some of them border and you know people people had discovered ways to which what they do will be seen as perfectly legitimate and legal but you know you can still get the idea behind what is on display that uh, there is a bit of that mischief or quite a bit of it which some people will try to monetize on um you know i always find it always find it um intriguing and to a degree mesmerizing how the human mind works and how people find the method where they now are will use that to our advantage and uh, um sometimes i get very disappointed in fact i, I have a couple of uh, um contacts on Instagram recently um, that I thought were doing very very interesting
access their private pages, they realised they were doing something else in addition, which really wasn't particularly reputable. So it was very disappointing because I thought they could capitalise on the talent for producing interesting content or their broadcasting abilities and then carry on with this. But you know, the trouble is those things do not make any money and the ones which border illegality and mischief they make quite a bit of revenue. It's just the way it is, and this is the reason as to why they're pursuing it. Uh, as I said, for myself, uh, sometimes, I recently have come across a, a few of those um, content creators, uh, it was disappointing. I thought it was taking a shortcut and not really uh, looking at the actual potential the person had. Uh, and as we know, once you are being boxed up in a particular type of activity, specifically that activity is not seen as reputable, um, you're not going to be able to get out of there. Um, you will be stigmatised. So, you know, a lot of younger people don't really understand how the whole thing works and uh, they think, oh, well, you know, we're anonymous, we can do whatever we want. And, and it's very interesting to see what reactions certain content creators uh, get from their own community if they had a very sharp swing from doing, let's say, reputable gaming and entertaining others through high quality broadcasting and puns and jokes and, you know, generally light-hearted entertainment when they went down, to, they went down the other route, which borders illegality and mischief without me actually specifying, you know, what, what I'm talking about and uh, um, what reaction they would be getting. So sometimes it was extremely, extremely harsh. Um, well, it's it's richly down to those people to take their decisions and make sure that they do what they believe is the best and right for them. Um, you will know if you are somebody who is... This is a relatively new medium that is evolving constantly with many different opportunities based on the development of the tech. And in order to um, catch attention, in order to uh, do something that is significant and pertinent and eye-catching, you have to work really, really hard. And you need to come up with concepts. You need to do it within certain systems um, if you are to be indeed drawing attention. And in due course, perhaps uh, you'd be able to monetize. Um, as many people try to do, let's face the facts, it's, it, it is certainly an opportunity when you look at the figures and the numbers. Uh, the vast majority of uh, these sites are based on views and clicks and likes and you know and uh, there could be sometimes a very significant investment uh, um, given or provided uh, for those who are indeed attract uh, attracting a certain kind of attention but uh, something that falls into your lap this is what I'm trying to highlight. It is a lot of very, very hard work and research and preparation and content creation. Even if you're using various um, automated clip generators and um, you know any 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 stuff that can be extracted, still you will want to be selecting. You will want to be involved to a degree. You need to be launching it. So they say there's a lot of uh, nitty gritty in that process, which at times before you get properly well versed. Uh, does come across as very time consuming and uh, uh, you know sadly it is all about quantity and I have seen quite a few streamers uh, doing reputable um, online game gaming streams and they would just burn out you know it was just really too hard uh, they underestimated the biological response to many hours um, when you're spending your time at the front of a monitor and see you're not moving you're constantly static it has a uh, uh, you know a very severe uh, biological effect as well as obviously psychological and you know one has to be really um, looking up um, to those people who have found the method and then basically learn from them and I think that's most important I think uh, uh, for me Dana from uh, Latvia and you know her Danusti channel is just really the best example because she lives in a fairly rural area and has plenty of nature around and you know she can always hammer it uh, for a certain number of hours per day but then take a stroll enjoy the nature do a bit of exercise enjoy the, you know talk to the people uh, it, that that's the best balance but as I want to stress one thing um, there are so many articles uh, online indicating how this is an easy way out and I remember 15 maybe 20 no, it's less than 20 years ago 15 17 years ago you'd you'd have so many different um 
which we're telling you are. You don't want to be slaving at work, working with somebody else. Why not just do something like multi-level marketing and you'll make millions and you know, you'll do this and that. And uh, this was the trend before what we have today with this audiovisual materials on Instagram and TikTok. And lots of people went in, down this route. I personally knew a few people who were able to uh, make a very significant revenue in a very short period of time as they came up, for instance, with an interesting product. And uh, they managed to use the system, which was at that time in its infancy, um, to their own advantage. But the vast majority, we're talking 99.9%, they spent a lot of time building such websites and you know, trying to monetize and do other things. And um, it actually all came to a huge expense rather than any form of earnings. They had to be constantly purchasing uh, new software, new add-ons, new this and that, uh, in order to run these types of schemes that actually did not produce revenue for people involved, but for those who were running the very, very original website of the scheme, that would be then obviously uh, taking the full benefit. So people try this, you know, the, the independence uh, of that sort, particularly if it's financially lucrative, appe uh, appeals to everyone. But it's very similar to what you have in finance and banking, because a lot of people think, ah, if you get the capital, you know, you, you'll just do well. It doesn't really work like this. <laughs> there are lots of lots of hoops in there which you will need to get through. And there are methods and structures that will need to be seriously considered and fully understood before you get in. Um, I mean, you know, my heart sinks when I see people uh, doing various things online and then, you know, basically um, quitting and feeling they're completely burnt out. They're not getting the right reward. Their community kind of dilapidates to a degree or disperses. And, and uh, um, you know, you don't, you've got to retain that. You need to have the concept. You need to be flexible and you need to be adapting to the changes because something that's been interesting three years ago may not be at all interesting today. Um, you, know, you need to integrate things that keep coming your way, like, for instance, bits, cheers, memes, jokes, some of the automated services. But most important thing is your own game and mindset. If you're doing, um, well, doing any form of stream, it doesn't have to be a gaming stream, it could be just chatting, it could be debating different things. So you need to have that concept that you need to work out on the paper, you knowing exactly how you will be doing it. And then every three months you re-examine, see you know, what the benefits are and what ins and outs of what you're doing really um, appear to be in order for you to be enhancing and advancing everything you do. As I said, uh, it is a very long-term process and I have uh, quite a number of people uh, in my community who have been streaming, I'd say now for my eight, eight maybe eight or nine years, ever since the original Twitch. Uh, they have a lot of experience, you know, of everything that's been going on and they have that degree of consistency and they have uh, the concept, but nothing came easy. It all came after many years of hard work uh, planning, exploration, um, build up a own community, but also sticking to their own values. You know, they weren't selling the concept that they had originally in, you know, for something else. Like for the vast majority would have been doing a similar sort of thing, just just tailoring it to the interest and maybe to to the new tech as well. Um, so you know, um, I always thought that um, PC streams looked really professional, beautiful, and they had many more. Uh, possibilities compared to what we had the consoles, but that's changed of late. And as you've seen on my streams, I have now very good overlays, and we have alerts and various other things which are being done through the third party. So, you know, these things are constantly evolving. What's important for uh, somebody who's a streamer is to accept the activity as something uh, long term, something that people can be doing literally lifelong. And uh, I just think that for anyone who is coming to a more advanced stage, uh, being associated with a community like Skyrim or Destiny or I mean, maybe maybe the communities where you don't have such high octane activity is fantastic because you keep yourself busy and occupied, you have your own people uh, come in every single day to talk to you and you can monetize, you can do different things, you can um, you know, in due course, if your community grows, you can be um, partnered with uh, uh, certain companies. You can make some revenue to to supplement your your earnings of pension. And uh, I just want to s just clarify that the online gaming, as it stands today, or the online activity, that includes also different ways to which people can generate interest, build communities, monetize, etc., etc., is something that doesn't belong just to one generation. I think it's a very big misconception. We hear from lots of people that the um, 
youngsters. Well, not quite like that, because you know people have been gaming now for more than 30 years. Somebody who, who began with their gaming experience in the early 20s, today is in their mid 50s, and obviously people playing the games today, like Apex or Warzone, who are in the 20s. In 30 years, they'll be in the 50s, and God knows what types of activities and games they'll have at that time. Probably something within the name of, you know, holographic experience or virtual reality, or I mean, God knows what. It's it's very hard to tell, but uh, uh, the way things are evolving is rapid and certainly advanced and exciting and interesting. I've got to say, uh, even when I look back at the games produced five, six years ago, I just think the uh, enhancements that we've seen in the meantime are really quite remarkable and. Um, for the games that have been remastered. But the other day I looked at Quake, I didn't mention this. Uh, they released the remastered enhanced edition. It's just a, just a, you know, it's the old game, but it just looks really. Obviously, it's Bethesda, it is Xbox now, and um, you've, got, you've got to try it if you're interested. If you're a gamer who was interested in Doom and Quake, you have got to try these remastered versions. They look incredible. And I think in due course they'll come up with some other um, software or some sort of program that will actually make them even better. Uh, I couldn't believe how good Halo looked like, you know, once remastered. And these kinds of uh, uh, possibilities are just simply continuously evolving. And uh, what's important is that the old product is never going to be forgotten or ignored. You have a huge number of people who are asking for the old titles to be brought in, remastered, re-delivered, and uh, there's a huge interest for that uh, from the gaming community as well as from the developers, as we've seen. And uh, anyone interested in uh, anyone playing Baldur's Gate 3 today, it's a state-of-the-art game, more than 70 hours of cutscene. Play the dialogue, uh, massive, massive, massive amount of content. But you know, if you go back in time, you can you can access the uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 Enhanced Edition and you will get the roots of the game and the game as it was for that many years in the past and one of the most popular RPGs is, I think frequently is forgotten for some reason. People forget about Baldur's Gate. You happen to hear of uh, the, um, you know, the Elder Scrolls series always and uh, Age of Eternity and you know, the, the few other games that indeed had been defining the genre, but Baldur's Gate, I remember it, you know, many years back uh, when um, I began collecting and playing PC games, was definitely one of those top-notch RPGs. You really, everybody wants to find out what was happening in that world, and uh, today with the open world as we have it in Valhalla, for instance, it's a different different story and different board game altogether, but still, the game originates from will find sometimes if you go back in time is that the technically these games were not enhanced I mean not advanced but the content you know the beauty of the game was in the sheer quantity of dialogue exploration of the world and what you you know previously were just reading off your computer screen rather than having NPCs telling you all about it and uh, I remember playing quite a number of games at the time I was astonished by the quantity of options and dialogue. I think mean, well, Baldur's Gate was one of the first, um, and then I remember also doing the old, the early Fallout, and that was also very, very good. It was a mixture of RPG with tactical and strategy, and you know, it was, it was just uh, definitely something that um, grabbed us and captivated us for the time being. And as we've seen ever since, things were just ascending going up and up quality wise. So coming back to my point, if you're a streamer and if you are somebody who is considering what content to create, that what you're doing is perhaps not doing the very best of benefits, just always think about it as a, as a sort of a, um, like an integrated system. You can't be doing it just in Twitch. You've got to do it on all the session networking platforms. You've got to be engaged with all of them, one way or the other. How frequently and what volume is done to yourself? But people who are able to engage with all of them and then bring them back to one forum where they talk live are the people who are doing uh, by far the very best. And also it's the diversity of comments. It's the diversity of different types of things that you will get from audiences. Uh, um, you know, people who like reading they will go to blogs, they won't necessarily go to uh, TikTok. They will go to Twitter to get access to certain links which will point them to blogs. It's Twitter and blogs, you know, for people who are, who, who are like bookworms, people who like more, uh, reading and analyzing lengthy articles. But for those that are into uh, audiovisuals, they'll be always going down the route of 
shorts on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and that's just incredibly popular. I can't, I mean, I can't believe how popular the uh, the reels are now on Facebook because that's just completely overtaken. You know, previously it was all about communication directly with your friends and people in your social circle. Today it isn't. It's all about, well, I guess they're blending in with Instagram, where the um, what we call in uh, in psychology manic defense you know manic defense is a way through which we are dealing and battling against our unwanted you know side and what we do not do not like to see we, we would say our depressive feelings uh, the side of us which is not always most appealing and uh, we battle those feelings through creation uh, of uh, um, the most appealing images and the ways to which we want to be seen ourselves in the eyes of others. So, for instance, when you look at Instagram, that's exactly what you get. number of people who are presented in a format which is, uh, you know, absolutely tip-top, ideal, and anyone watching it will think, ah, oh, this person is always like that. I remember, just remember the other day, um, when I was a teenager, I used to go to pictures with a friend, and we watched um, a couple of films of Richard Gere, who was a star that at that time was ascending. And he said, you know what's funny? I said, what? Well, it doesn't matter where he is, whether he is out there when it's raining, whether he's at home eating his dinner, whether he's asleep, right? Or he's in bed with somebody. Um, his haircut and his hairstyle is always exactly the same. <laughs> And that really stuck with me. I, I never thought about that myself, but he really was fascinated by the fact that it didn't matter what this character or what the actor did, he always looked the same. He always had the absolute tip-top look. Well, that is what I was describing. Um, that is what I... Uh, Instagram and uh, um, Facebook, when you are getting the images that are just like that, never ever, well, obviously there, there are some people who will post images of themselves when they wake up, but that's not really the most appealing, the most desired part of what people want to see there. And uh, um, yeah, it just really, it's extraordinary how it communicates with people's uh, fantasies, with people's unconscious, and what types of ideas people get when they watch certain short clips or they watch certain videos and uh, um, certain uh, reels and uh, I think it's, it's a very very fertile very pertinent field which requires further exploration but coming back to content creation I just do feel that content creation is something that is um, uh, incredibly important and uh, despite of the negativity that you get from people on some of the uh, online platforms uh, I have never seen many more people being involved in such uh, voluminous so these platforms are actually making it possible for literally anyone to do whatever they want and present it as a creative, interesting content. So I think in due course, as we carry on, we'll discover that many people explore these platforms and then found their own talents that previously they were fully unaware of. You know, people can discover, for instance, through um, streaming on Instagram, that they're very good singers. Um, I don't know whether you watch the... Um, our chap, uh, what's his name, um, the guy who was doing the Eurovision, um, Sam Riley, right? He said that uh, um, he was just, you know, singing on, I think, I think it was YouTube uh, rather than Instagram, and just huge popularity. People realised he was a fantastic singer, and he, he knew that he was alright, but he never thought he actually would have been um, as good. So you could see, through the use of the platform, particularly during the pandemic, where he was like everyone from others, he discovered a talent that was then recognised and he changed his life. And that will be the case for many people. I think we'll see more of uh, educational content and well, we already have quite a lot of educational content um, uh, uh, on Instagram. People who are into, for instance, doing physical therapies, you know, from physiotherapy to yoga, for instance, there's a huge amount of uh, uh, contributors. You have people who are into cooking, for instance, so they're, they're presenting cooking classes and maybe not the most popular, but still attracting a lot of interest, uh, and etc, etc, the list just goes on. Anyway, I've just uh, told you a bit about uh, the diversity of different options that we have if we are content creators online, and, um, you know, just, just explore what's out there and try to think of some of the things I said. Uh, I was exploring the um, technical side of content creation this weekend, so I was trying to get some clips out of my streams and uh, 
Uh, very time consuming as I had to be doing them manually unfortunately I couldn't do anything else but um, cut out certain activities and then do the tags and all else but you know maybe it would have taken me a lot longer this weekend because it's the first time I was doing anything of that sort but uh, uh, once I become and once I am already well versed in knowing what to do then it will be perhaps a somewhat quick exercise and I'll try to really uh, make these reels to be a reflection of what we do here on the channel with our community members like a short clip of some activity like you know destroying Omnigal, destroying the Bond brothers, um, going after a, a look a, a like Hull or doing something in Prisoner of Elder. so short clips that perhaps for somebody who has never been to Destiny World will, will you know um, capture some some interest and they'll they'll obviously be uh, then wanted to see what this game was about and also maybe come in and have a look at our community because online so i posted two of these and i'll give you actually two more if you're interested you'll be able to see and uh, uh, they come ac uh, they come across in the uh, um, portrait format rather than landscape and uh, let me just have a look um which ones did I put there? Destroying Omnigal. Let's see that. Um, bear with me a second. We'll put two more. Um, so this is Destroying Omnigal. And then... Omnigal is destroyed. So there we are. Have a look. Tell me what you think. And uh, I also have some of those clips on Twitch, also um, in a different format, which is landscape, so you can see the full screen. And uh, you know, I'll try it out for a little while. We'll see what interest we get. But I'll give you one example. I thought that hardly anybody would look at these clips because obviously I've just put them on and you know but then one clip one clip I, 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 I placed yesterday on YouTube Shorts within a few hours had 1.2 thousand right 1,200 viewers so obviously there was something in the clip that was both attracting attention of the viewers as well as the interest of the algorithms that were pushing it wherever that was indeed push through. So I think we are likely to see some new members of our community arising from some of the clips and you know we'll, we'll try to do uh, some of that as a regular so if anyone has any other ideas so you want to come in and do some clipping or you want to uh, participate with online activities just you know make sure you let me know and we'll do it together and that is then accessible and available uh, literally to everyone to keep just you know, screenshot it or you can uh, record it off your phone or you can download it there's a multitude of different options and uh, I won't be able to have huge diversity of clips across all platforms uh, for obvious reason because we, we are limited to what we do within one activity it will be interesting and many people do not um, kind of do cross-platform activity people who read on Twitter then they're going to Instagram and vice versa so I think it will be okay and the vast majority will go to uh, well first of all will be here on Twitch but then you'll have it on TikTok TikTok being the platform that's most popular at the moment um, for those types of short clips and um, quite a vibrant TikTok bring uh, watching some of those linked to Apex and PUBG little while back and more so and you know the community that is very much there to be presenting some interesting short content and also to draw attention for people to come into the channel and then talk to others and um, so uh, let's see what happens next all right so that's all about what I've been doing during this weekend if you're interested just access the clips on any of my platforms and you'll be able to see what is out there right so now is the time for us to look at some of the news all that's come in uh, through various uh, social networking platforms and news outlets I've got to say there weren't that many and I was quite surprised as presently we have several games either out or highly anticipated um, first of all I want to ask everyone whether you played any of the Assassin's Creed games uh, this is a fantastic offer and anyone who played any of them 
purchasing as they're presently offered on 75% discount and some of the top editions are offered on a very very good price for instance the ultimate edition of Valhalla was offered a price by £30 that's significantly less than maybe 9100 and anyone interested can still go there and have a look at the prices and all of that today I think it is ending at some point today it's late in the day UK time so definitely worth, worth a shot I played Valhalla again and uh, I did not look at all the other Assassin's Creed uh, titles because the vast majority I have are on them on Xbox and I also have access to all of them through um, PlayStation Plus services so I'm not really fast uh, at the moment to, to go into everything and uh, the only title that I couldn't see anywhere was Assassin's Creed 1 and that title I have on the disc I purchased it and anyone who lives in Britain uh, I just advise everyone um, you can go to CX stands for computer exchange they have shops in almost every high street um, in our towns and cities and you can get these old games for as little as 50 pence Xbox uh, on their uh, Xbox store are selling them you know well they're not very expensive but I've seen for instance Max Payne being sold for 750 750 fairly steep um, compared to what I can get in CX for 50 pence I don't know whether Max Payne is 50 pence but I wouldn't, wouldn't think it'd be more than 150 if purchased on the Xbox original disc and uh, um, you know so now is the time to stock up and to save money and purchase these discs whilst they're still in circulation as I think in no time we'll see the demise of physical disc and physical product in the gaming industry similar to what we've seen with um, films uh, I have to tell you that in my local area we have quite a few charity shops anymore because nobody wants to buy them and they come in in huge numbers so I was able to purchase very many DVDs during the last 18 months in fact recently I purchased 200 on the price of 20 pence per, per disc so think about it 20 pence per disc and that included box sets I had Doris Day box set a discs included Audrey Hepburn Humphrey Bogart they just didn't, didn't know what to do with them because nobody would buy them and uh, that's one of the reasons as I feel uh, maybe a good idea for people to start stocking up on some of the older games disc wise as these discs may just disappear you know if the company CX or other companies take the decision that no longer is this um, financially viable then you know the first sign is charity shops if they stop I remember the same problem with um, VHS tapes uh, they just occupying too much space nobody would buy them anymore and that was it and that goes together with the equipment you know that you can use in order to watch the uh, recorders or the, um, the VCRs as, as we know uh, the old ones or so now we have uh, the uh, um, um, DVD recorders or the ones which were recording to discs of the uh, TV sets once all of those are gone and they are gone they're no longer manufactured there'll be fewer accessible and therefore there'll be no um, capacity for many people to watch discs uh, through some of those um, setups and uh, you know sometimes if you have a high quality one like Panasonic or Pioneer they'll serve you well but there may be also time when they break down and then it's very hard to replace going back in time I was a film collector and I had collected many films in Super 8 and Standard 8 um, and the trouble with, with you know the film collection was um, the absence of spares for the old projectors so if you had really projectors that were not the very top of the range or indeed if they were top of the range but they were really pretty well worn bought them second hand then you couldn't get the spares and then you couldn't watch these films you know so anyway it's a long story so um, we had some articles about destiny and uh, uh, it is games radar that are telling us similar to many members of our community and people who we've seen on reddit um, they're really kind of concerned about the state of the game so we have Austin Wood he's a senior writer um, at Game, Games Radar and I've read quite a few of his articles here live online uh, over, over the years uh, he said his own opinion is that Destiny 2 is not dying but it does sometimes feel like a game near the end of its life um, so he says um, that's the article published on Games Radar so I'll just read out what Austin Wood said that for the past few months, 
lot more than I've been playing it, um, that's for sure. The latest rapture in the dam of community outrage, Cleveland, um opened by a downright ugly state of the game block post, has pushed those thoughts to the front of my mind. Destiny has been part of my personal and professional life for nine years, so it's with some experience that I find myself once again trying to unpack the community's frustrations and articulate my own. A lot of people are saying the same old things. The game is dead. The devs at Bungie are lazy. They want to end this thing and be done with. Those statements are as untrue as ever. Destiny 2 is unquestionably in a dip right now. The lightest alarm in my mind is the sudden disinterest of my famously hardcore clanmate. But it's not dying. It's still one of the most consistently successful live service games ever created, and it's still got arguably the best gunplay in the history of video games. But at the same time, it does feel to me it's life. I think I agree with Mr. Wood, actually. I think remarkable, very important points. And uh, um, I still think that technically Destiny is out of this world. It's the one of the most successful shooters ever created. And like you said, the gunfights and everything else in a live service game. Don't mix this up with the games which are not on a live ser service, um, which is a different, different ball game altogether. You know, it can go down the route of um, um, Borderlands, for instance. Um, but uh, uh, there, there are problems, and the problems are more to do with the way Bungie as an organization is tackling the issues and the questions coming from the community more than the game itself. And I think that's causing a huge dissatisfaction and certainly uh, a number of eyebrows to be raised. So he says, I don't actually think Destiny 2 is near end of its life, but it feels like it, and that's what's weighing on my mind. It's an old game that feels old, to give out under the unstoppable march of time. We are in season 21 of Destiny 2 and I don't know how much more this game has to give. I don't know how much more I want to actually play it. Maybe this is just the inevitable fate of a season model that's gone on this long. Every time Bungie gets a decent sandcastle going, a new season washes it away. Loot has become unappealing compared to stuff we already have. Core playlists have deteriorated. I agree with that one. The servers are on fire, obviously for different reasons, but it is not helping, and the narrative is one once again up in the air. I'm past the point of discussing what should be done, and I'm now wondering uh, what can be done. With Bungie openly throwing up its hands and declaring parts of its game unsalvageable, I'm not overflowing with huge optimism. I've read a lot of Destiny's state of the game blog po posts in, nine, in these nine years, and it's rare for Bungie to sound so defeated money than ever, yet at the same time Bungie saying it can't or won't dedicate resources to several sizable elements of the game. Gambit is the um, case in point in here, of course. I've seen some players point out that after the state of the game, at least we can put some age-old hopes to bed. Well, that's for sure. But I'd argue it's as bad as you thought and it's not getting better. It's not the message the game needed. It's becoming increasingly difficult to have fun in Destiny 2 once you leave the bubble of the newest content and that content rot is apparently only getting going to get worse. So look at Gambit, for God's sake, look at Gambit. Anyone who ever makes any kind of PvP PvE game ought to study the bruised, battered and burned corpse of Destiny 2's Gambit mode, which Bungie has now thrown into wood chipper for good measure. Gambit was one type as a premiere edition for Forsaken. Actually, it was the premiere edition. People played either Escalation Protocol or Gambit at the time. Um, one of the game's biggest expansions and, the, and also had been vaulted, you know, the most loved expansion Forsaken has gone into the vault. And the middle ground for the core playlist, you've got PV in Strikes, PvP in Crucible and PvP PV in Gambit. And guess what? Gambit used to be fun. Absolutely. I, I loved playing it at the time. I played loads of matches at the time. People looked at Gambit Mornings and asked where the sudden love uh, for the Moid <coughs> for the Moid came from when the data uh, shows almost nobody was playing it. I can honestly say I did like Gambit once upon a time. I would like to like it again. But lacking loot, heavy weapons, obnoxious invader design and a dire lack of updates has left in such disrespair that Bungie would rather condemn it like an abandoned house and tell everyone they do not need to worry about it anymore. There's a logical argument for this decision, but I get enough harm reduction from US elections, I don't find it any more encouraging here. So look at the PvP. I don't know how Destiny 2 still has uh, the PvP 
because gunplay aside, my any half decent competitive shooter will serve you as well. You're just really not not really particularly exciting. Playing Destiny 2 for PvP is like buying a whole burger just to eat the pickles of it. You know people sell whole jars of pickles, right? I was once a top 50 clash player in Destiny 1, according to Destiny Track anyway. At this point I think of PvP in Destiny 2 the way I think of PvP in Diablo 4. It's unbashedly unbalanced and it is just a complete mess that most people can only enjoy if they are if they like getting messy. If you go into expecting anything else, you will get burned. Maybe it's good for people to finally know without a shadow of a doubt that Bungie does hear the request for more PvP maps, but it isn't going to make more because that will require resources it apparently can't spare. I guess that's better than players hanging onto threadbare wishes for years. And it's not like PvP is neglected. Um, it's getting some new modes, loot, balance changes, and so on for multiplayer shooters and actively making a new PvP shooter say it can't make any new maps. I've seen people complain about Marathon allegedly sucking up Destiny's 2 resources, but the fact is it's normal and good for a company to spend revenue from one success on new projects. That's how businesses work. Also seen misconceptions about how the 3.6 billion Sony acquisition of Bungie surely must have um, filled Bungie's coffers to the point that it can snap its fingers and buy a solution to anything. That's not how the acquisitions work, nor is it how the money works. With all of that said, it doesn't feel good to see Bungie open a state of the game by talking all about things it can't do when it really doesn't feel like people asking for the moon here. The loot. The problem with the loot. With Gambit updates and PvP maps, I can at least see where Bungie is coming from, uh, even uh, if it leaves a sad taste in my mouth. But the armor thing, come on, making one increasingly challenging, especially considering these sets have historically had very low adoption by players as both base armor and cosmetic ornaments. Well, he says, come on, Bungie. Players are not wearing rich armor because it drops with low stats. This is also one of the reasons most people do not like to grind the standard Vanguard playlist. Strikes, especially, are completely unrewarding. A lot of Destiny 2 is unrewarding, which is a big problem for loot game. And people aren't transmogging this armor because the sets have been pretty darn ugly. But instead of making more, stronger or better looking armor, we're just throwing in the towel after falling to deliver, failing to deliver playlist armor in Lightfall. There's absolutely no denying the optics of this in the context of Destiny 2's Eververse still pumping out plenty of more fashionable armor without issue. Release that slick ball Titan Eververse getup as ritual armor and see how many players adopt it. I recognize that Eververse uh, is its own thing. Ornaments are different several months and we still get new sets <clears throat> in seasons and dungeons and raids. I'm not going to pretend that I know how this armor is made. But I'm not saying it would be easy for Bungie to make more playlist armor. I'm saying this is incredibly flimsy and disappointing argument for a loot-based game to, to make. So the question is that he has, well, what will be coming next? Well, there is not a doubt in my mind that Bungie will show some very cool footage full of cool stuff at the August 22nd final, sh final ship showcase. <clears throat> it will get people hyped right the hell. Excuse me. <clears throat> need to clear my throat. You'll get people hyped right the, uh, um it will be it will get people hyped up and despite the bitter state of the game and in fairness promise uh, some great quality of life changes. But after nine years, uh, I'd like to see more good news that doesn't actually come together with bad news. He says, um, my personal wish list for the reveal is short but nebulous. What I want is something to look forward to, not for the year ahead, but for the years that Bungie says are still in store for Destiny 2, because I'm struggling to see a future for the game, at least my future, whether it's beyond the light and darkness finale, which is coming in, in the next expansion, the last part of a quadrology that wasn't even planned a few years ago. After the narrative letdown of Lightfall, I'm less confident even that um, compared to one year ago. So he's concluding, the fact that I'm ready desperately, I'm already desperately looking this far ahead, goes to show that how little staying power 
and I think that's a big part of why the community is so down right now. Lightfall was not the lowest point of Destiny 2, but I reckon it was the biggest fumble of any annual expansion and the effects of that are still sinking in. A lot of little problems and some new big ones have congealed into one disconcerting mess. These days I play Destiny 2 purely for new story missions and weekly raid or dungeon resets. I still encourage people to be I still encourage people frustrated with any game to take a break and I've certainly been playing less following my own advice. The smartest thing the Final Fantasy XIV developers ever did was repeatedly encourage people to play other games, rightly acknowledging that even the best MMOs could not be truly bottomless. And I do not expect Destiny 2 uh, to be bottomless, I just want to um, I want to want to play it more than the bare minimum and that doesn't feel like asking for the moon. So that's the article written by These are his thoughts and I think I agree pretty much with everything. Um, the only thing is for myself I wouldn't really uh, pay too much attention to the PvP um, as I feel that PvP, uh, the Crucible, has been always the weakest link of Destiny both in the first and the second game. They will not be investing much more in there because actually the Crucible is easy money. It's uh, very, you know, it's full of small maps, death matches, which are highly addictive for certain types of players, and they'll offer certain loot that will be tied into this activity. So that's literally easy, does not require a lot of time and effort. Um, because the maps are so tight, there is going to be a lot of dying and rezzing, and that's just the way it is going to be. I'm not expecting anything like a major battle royale map in here where we would play a Korra and Zavala and Eris and everyone else with special super abilities. You know, they could create a game. Destiny, Apex of Legends, and there's no reason as to why we shouldn't have this. Um, I'm not sure whether people really uh, thought about it, but I, th I certainly would find that to be very, very exciting, as separate characters could have special abilities similar to what uh, the Legends in Apex have. It would be very, very enjoyable for everyone. You bring in 100 players, or you know, bring like 30, 40 teams, 120 players then, and uh, you have the game as a three-piece for everyone who's participating be hugely popular but then you will need to be battling it out in a very very large map so it would be a planet you know it'd be like what you have on the moon or what you have on nexus or and then you could strategize you can come up with different tactics you can you can make it really interesting so every single match comes across as a different type of activity um, that certainly would bring people back to the game would said departing from Gambit, which was one of the most popular activities a little while back, together with Escalation Protocol, is ridiculous. And uh, uh, I think the the article, um, the one I read, you know, been reading here online as well, State of the Game, is very defeatist. It's just telling us what they cannot be doing, and that's been the, the feature of some of those announcements for some time. Like, for instance, the feature of the vaulting. We cannot be doing this because we don't have space. We have this and the other. You know, I find that generally quite dubious. Uh, on balance, Destiny is succeeding um, in terms of its quality content, the overall activity, and some amazing sections never ever seen previously on live servers. But at the same time, it's failing on the level to which previously uh, Bungie had very, very good relationship with their community, the, the members of Destiny community more than nine years and uh, um, that's gone and that is causing a huge amount of uh, aggravation discontent and many people feel that they've just taken a completely different direction what gamers need to understand and our friend mr. wood was not really describing much um, is the cost uh, just like everything else in life at the moment has hit historic highs. We never had anything as expensive as it is today. And that includes transportation, housing, energy, fuel, you name it. Everything's up and up. Uh, Bungie, as an independent developer, they have massive costs. You know, the energy they're using for what they're doing is phenomenally high. So obviously the, the, the costs have gone up and up and up. And when he talked about that uh, acquisition, the acquisition, similar to the transfer you have with a footballer, doesn't mean that that's pocketed. It's an investment. An investment 
stay there in order to get greater value or to be seen and for the company to operate. And I think lots of people don't understand this. They'll say, ah, oh, they made that money. They didn't make that money. The acquisition did not make 3.6 billion for Bungie. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it doesn't work like this in the investment business. Um, in the same way as you would say, ah, oh, Ronaldo, uh, the Benzema, and I had gone to um, those football clubs in uh, Saudi Arabia, and many other players have gone in there for unbelievable amounts of money. Well, actually, what is unbelievable is not the transfer money, it's the salary. And very few people talk about that, you know, they talk about the transfer money, which is massive. But it's the salary of these players that is hugely significant, because it's higher than anything they could have ever um, they could have ever dreamt of. So uh, anyway, that's that's a story for another day. Uh, what I uh, want cost and Destiny and Bungie have got to be able to monetize in certain ways if they are to carry on. This is this game is unbelievably expensive, and I just find it strange that they continue to run um, the game on two separate servers because obviously maybe the, the idea was to integrate everything immediately but it, it was taking time and uh, um, you know two games together um, run separately are costing them a lot specifically the sequel and they will have to really um, look at the balance sheet and uh, take a decision in terms of what works for them financially um, if they carry on like this they will lose a huge number of participants due to um, the aggressive monetization policy I've seen of late, which always can be retracted, don't forget. You can always have content sold, later given for free. There are always different ways to which they can uh, uh, get people to come back in or indeed get the new gamers. A um, period of 90 lengthy period for video game and within 10 years you get new generations of gamers coming in and you get old generations sometimes departing. Um, I think what Mr. Wood did not state clearly enough is that the reason as to why certain people play games from the 90s, um, you know, like Final Fantasy and uh, um, Baldur's Gate and uh, um, Elder Scrolls Fallout, is the story. The story of the games is critical in that factor of longevity. Obviously, you are going to be interested in PvP, PvE, various things within the open world, but the story is what really makes the difference. And uh, uh, in Destiny, they try to build a story through the collection of lore, and you're reading about these Destiny legends through the collection of papers or um, pages from various books which are telling you all about it. I think it's a really wrong way of doing it. Be reading all of those articles in order to what's happening in Destiny. The reason I described earlier, today's generations are not really article driven. They're visual, audiovisual clips driven and if you had small clips like small videos on the inside which you can access, like small cutscenes, the mini documentaries telling you all about the history of destiny, that would draw attention. That would be a lot more pertinent than the articles read. Um, I'm playing Valhalla at the moment and I have to say Ubisoft had very very carefully considered the elements of what you are to be reading. So when you pick up certain scrolls or certain texts which need to be read, they're very, very brief. So it's beautifully, beautifully considered. They know that people will not be reading uh, uh, you know, like um, a thesis of some sort, or lengthy essays, because nobody who isn't a hardcore gamer today, this is where the discrepancy is, so that is something that Bungie will need to tackle, they will need to make the law interactive and audiovisual, and therefore it will make more sense, more cutscenes, more narrative content, more dialogue, more interaction with characters similar to what you have in Oblivion or in Mass Effect or similar to Bioware games or even the games um, produced by Bethesda but that degree of interactivity is always interesting. I think there's been an article today and I'll tell you about this in a moment. Anyway, uh, these are my thoughts uh, linked to Destiny. I'm like uh, most of the words looking forward to the expansion. I mean, the expansion. I'm looking forward to the showcase event and then consequently to the expansion, the last shape. Um, I think there are lots of negative gloomy doomy predicaments which are presently flying about due to you know people being dissatisfied. He did clarify the Destiny 
destiny is not at the you know tail end of any sort of investment and uh, um, we certainly will see a lot more come from the game but they did say that with the conclusion of this saga there is going to be a different direction and that could also be a completely different concept that is construed for the game don't forget at the moment we have two games that are changing the nature of uh, RPG environment. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, with its unbelievably voluminous content and the standards that the game had introduced now to uh, this sort of uh, a huge, huge, uh, massive, big open world RPG, and uh, then you have Starfield, um, which I guess would be more aligned to Destiny and Mass Effect as a sci fi game. So it's definitely uh, uh, worthy of our attention. It's definitely important to see how those two games and their reception will be affecting the expectations. As we've seen um, frequently in game activity introduced to a particular title, there were also other titles trying to do something similar in due course because it was popular and it was just raising the bar. You know, the standards were raised, uh, the expectations were raised, therefore they couldn't offer the product anymore without those types of uh, activities included. Um, you know, we just need to be patient and wait and see. Very spoiled for choice. Many of those big uh, blockbusters, triple blockbusters, are coming our way, and it feels a bit congested. I think within the ne next 12 to 18 months, uh, as we are clearing out the backlog of the pandemic, as we've seen last year, have been particularly slim on the triple blockbuster titles, and that's all to do with the actual you know, the period and the process of production. The games will take two to three years to develop. Uh, you're talking about the major big blockbusters. You're talking about lengthier periods than that. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that they've not been able to projects at the time due to the restrictions. Um, so that really poses a problem for all of us as, as if we are to be um, uh, wanting to engage all the big titles you've seen with Summer Game Festival. There are just too many. And, you know, we need to play one at a time and uh, try them out as we go along. And uh, um, I guess the, we were spoiled for choice, you know, that's the other thing. If we are spoiled for choice, then uh, we have different expectations and people come up with different ideas. Uh, all of that is changing the nature of the industry. I still think we are entering an era where that degree of interactivity coupled with immersion is critical. So what Phil Spencer frequently calls the uh, the overall experience of online video gaming so it's all about the experience and i agree with that um xbox really improves significantly the audio quality um that you get in certain games that the, the latest uh, um else technically and uh, <clears throat> you know it's it's all about being able to come into valhalla world the old england of the ninth century and then explore every single corner um, have beautiful visuals, um, fantastic day and night cycle, wonderful music, um, beautifully created characters, great narrative. All of that blends in together and it's the overall immersive experience based on one's own fantasy world because we enter the world which indeed is resembling uh, the um, the world of that period with historic facts which are accurate to the characters that indeed existed. Uh, at the same time, the way we're experiencing it is entirely through our fantasy. Um, um, well, and uh, we really walk through one uh, uh, period of history for which we are really transforming it. You know, we cannot necessarily um, affect the outcome, but uh, we can learn about the way things were through the actual gameplay. So it's a different types of experiences from us being in the game, watching it, playing it, and enjoying the characters, uh, being a full active participant in all activities to learning about the uh, period of history which is presented before us through codex and activities within the game, various articles, uh, various items you pick up. And obviously, if you are doing the events which are historically accurate, you will remember exactly what you were doing and therefore uh, the entire period of history will become crystal clear in your mind. Incidentally, I was uh, just the other day, yesterday, in fact, meeting with my parishioners in our local church, which is what we do on Sunday. And I talked to two local people who are quite elderly, they're in the 70s, early 80s, uh, about the uh, um, the battles that were fought nearby where we live during those years in the 9th century. Uh, the church where we meet had been erected in the 9th century, so it was the church 
Franks and the Saxons were taking place in in uh, the south of England. So, you know, I'm in the game, <laughs> doing these battles and learning about it. And we had the the um, the battles taking place in our locality. So uh, it was interesting to talk to them because they were not aware of um, the local people. They, you know, from from um, Hertfordshire, and they were not aware of. Uh, uh, the tactics, the strategies, and the uh, conquests that the great King Alfred was able to do uh, are complete against the Vikings. And uh, it's it just, you know, um, it's, a, it's a very interesting experience because I know all about it um, through my own interest in history, which I researched and explored in a local museum and uh, our local library and, you know, various other facilities that I use. But then, being the game, I'm kind of watching it, I'm seeing it, uh, I really see things uh, to a degree which previously would have not been possible, and I'm an active participant as characters learning about all the kings, the kingdoms of England of the era, um, so it's, 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 it's really, um, it's a wonderful game, you know, it, it just, it does present us with new standards, and I think it's been overlooked. I didn't see or read that many articles about the latest trilogy of Assassin's Creed uh, 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 titles for which they would be seen as a proper educational content for everyone who is indeed uh, uh, um, involved with the um, with the overall exploration of history and as we know the uh, three titles are dedicated to um, Egypt, Greece and England. So there's a huge capacity for um, uh, further education and uh, uh, for us, you know, as gamers to learn if we want to and uh, engage with the sections through DLCs or mini museums or anything else within the game that's actually pointing us into the right direction. Uh, Destiny and the directions that Bungie is taken and I've got only about two or three other um, bits of news. It's not, not a huge amount and uh, um, we have uh, um, just bother me I saw that earlier did I really not pin it I didn't pin it I actually forgot um, well the the concern arising from the um, RPG industry you know other developers is that the new Baldur's Gate 3, which is so great to love and played at the moment by so many different people, is setting up the new standards for that type of game. And uh, they're worried that the new standards will just have to be upheld, just like anything else. You know, you watch action thrillers, and every single time if they've got better stunts or uh, better visuals, the other films coming out in the future will have to do something similar. They'll have to be up to certain standards financially as well um, and so that that's a very big concern and uh, I think uh, the concern is linked to the volume more than anything else the volume of the game is phenomenal which means requires huge funds if you are to be created obviously you can make a game that looks very um, basic visually but you will have a lot of dialogue and a lot of text and you know a good story not quite the same not quite the same because that game is blending it all together it's fantastic visuals, plenty of cutscenes, great narrative, interesting characters, even introducing that adult content that appears to be very, very popular amongst the gamers. Um, so, you know, it's it's certainly a legitimate concern. The concern is about them not being able to get to the same revenue and resources in order to be able to deliver that type of product. But I think that remains to be seen. Um, still early days and... Um, I mean, I've not seen any major concerns or complaints about um, Builders Gate in terms of its more to do the complaints about its incredible superior quality to anything else so you know we'll just wait and see um, we've heard that Eternal Champions um, the game that's come out recently is super weird and super charming and uh, I have seen a bit of it um, the other day it definitely looked very intriguing and uh, um, the uh, writer um, Jennifer Allen who writes for Euro Eurogamer she said I can't remember when I bought Eternal Champions which is annoying because I always remember obscure purchases to the detriment of remembering genuinely useful things besides the fact it would have been a Mega Drive uh, game that I had not seen before I can be fairly confident the game uh, cover sold it to me I would have been about 10 at the time my sole reference point was occasionally games magazines a lot of browsing and uh, thinking oh that really looks good and uh, for myself, being 10 year old, this was like uh, just uh, the best. And uh, um, she's saying how, for instance, the brief Google, uh, while writing this 
cover was painted by Julie Bell, an American illustrator and fantasy artist, which is terrific. I agree, I remember um, the uh, the cover. I love all the artwork to do with the Eternal Champions. Ignore my words for a moment and look at the screenshots and the photos from the manual. They're really lovely character models. Um, and they're, they're mostly courtesy of Ernie Chan, a comic book artist who worked on a lot of DC and Marvel comics during the 1970s. I'm very familiar because I read quite a lot of his comics and uh, definitely um, his works uh, during that period were highly noted. So um, she goes on and on with a description of the game and uh, uh, she's just literally uh, asking whether we are still excited about the weirdness of the characters, the weirdness of the activities which is present in Eternal Champions and uh, she says well um, what's the weirdest part through um, the game in this game while well, picking up villains in other fighting games is easy enough. This one is less of a morality tale, instead everyone's simply trying to save mankind by defeating each other in battle. As you do, it actually makes for a disjointed affair as it's hard to fully get eternal champions. Instead you focus on simply figuring it all out. The main story is tough and it's very tough with your AI opponent easily taking out a fair chunk of your health just with one hit. It was a little slow even at the time so it feels slower now but there is still the satisfaction that comes from st um, stringing those moves together as held by my copy including a combo card for tips. Well, it's certainly a very, very, very good reflection uh, on the game, and uh, I remember looking at the game a little while back, and certainly um, I and it stayed with me. And we've heard that Baldur's Gate 3 is now 2023's best-reviewed game according to Metacritic. Well, not surprising because there's so many players um, doing it every single day. He'll, he'll, he's breaking all records, and. Uh, um, told you all about the uh, uh, option that Discord has. Uh, they've introduced the uh, direct stream from Xbox Series X and S to Discord. I researched that here today because I remember me telling you um, about the uh, uh, introduction of that last week and basically it's going directly through Discord so it's not something that will go through Twitch at the same time and that's really not good because I wanted to use that in order to get my Xbox streams on Twitch and get the high quality sound but apparently it doesn't work like this either Twitch or Discord. So it's going to be Twitch for me, I'm afraid. Discord certainly um, not a platform that I want to be engaging with uh, stream-wise. But uh, if I was to be community members, uh, we can obviously do it on Discord. Uh, but that's very, you know, not many of these will be run as uh, I do everything live online through Twitch at the moment. And then we have um, Hmm. We have some um, news coming out of Bungie as well um, in relation to Lance Riddick and Commander Zavala. So, um, Destiny developer Bungie discussed how it plans to continue the character of Commander Zavala following the death of voice actor Lance Riddick, um, Riddick in fact, um, uh, early in the year. And uh, uh, they said that. Um, Zavala was central to Destiny's story and that the character will continue to remain prominent for years to come. As well, Zavala's English voice lines will be provided by veteran actor Keith David, starting with next year's um, expansion, The Final Shape and Beyond. So we know full well um, about um, Keith David and his works in the Mass Effect series. Anyone who is doubting whether that's going to be a good fit, just you know, listen to Captain Anderson in Mass Effect and you'll see that the voices are really quite similar um, and they will have the same sort of um, aura which I think is fundamental for Zavala's character so um, there's just certainly uh, no chance that Zavala would be discontinued or cut down or anything like that so we'll have uh, Keith David replacing um, Lance Riddick and then carrying on as normal Okay, so the last bit we have again is on Destiny, and uh, Paul Tassi, who is the regular writer on Destiny, is uh, simply uh, indicating that uh, the player should really manage expectations for the Final Shape Showcase. You're two weeks away from it, and he says um, you'll cover 
and um, he said that many people said that the the overall player morale was as low as been uh, for some time, but uh, the final shape must blow us away or shatter expectations, so it needs to be absolutely tip top. Um, and he says, well, that's really uh, not something that people should be entertaining because therefore the expectations could be too high, resulting in a disappointment. And uh, um, he said, the options for our final villains of the saga are not exactly a mystery. Zero Art could be in the mix somewhere. And then the witness is obviously the main target. But since this is the end of the Light and Darkness saga, it stands to reason that after all this shakes out, there will be no more traveller, no more witness in whatever form that takes, even if we retain all our light and dark superpowers. I don't really agree with that. I don't think that the um, there's a possibility for the witness to be eliminated, but for the traveller, why? I wouldn't see the reason for that. Where we all realize the traveler has been the bad guy all along and we fight it somehow instead. But this season we already heard the full origin of both the witness and the traveler, so that's not really a mystery to be solved. We're probably getting a sixth and final subclass. Um, a red one has leaked the exact same way Strand leaked. Bungie previewed a bunch of changes or lack of changes that will come over the course of the next few seasons. Uh, we know that the expansion is not going to surprise launch with a bunch of Crucible and Gambit maps. And uh, he says, um, I'm not saying that we should expect the final shape to be bad. I'm saying that even given the last two to three expansions, we should kind of know the format of what's coming. And given the nature of this being the final expansion of the saga, we should know that we are ultimately ri uh, ridding ourselves of the Traveller and Witness when all is said and done. Well, this is all speculations, my friends. I think it is unlikely that we'll have some as a concept, what is likely is that we'll have a new direction, and the new direction may have different characters and new elements of the story. So, like we've seen in some other games and films and series, you know, it's a change of direction. Alright, my friends, I talked a lot about our community-based content, about streaming, about what I've been doing during the weekend, about clipping, about other people joining our community and making and creating uh, uh, certain clips and uh, live streams online, talked about content creation, talked about why it's so important to carry on with uh, these types of activities as I believe they revolutionized our own capacity to discover our own hidden talents and uh, uh, now we're going to be doing some what we like doing the best and that is some gameplay uh, in Destiny 1. So let's see who's out there and who may want to join us. So let's see, I really had some invitations, we've had um, you, we'll see whether um, she is uh, going to be there still, uh, I'll be able to bring her in, we'll see whether Zenith, Gale, Sekapupu, Shaba, or any other friends are there, we'll see, um, who is out there today, let's see, our ah, friend Plumber1 is there, okay. And let's see who else we have. Um, hmm. Well, we'll see. Maybe Zenith would want to join us. If Zenith is watching, just please let me know and I'll be able to uh, bring you in. Or you are going to be able to, well, you'll be able to come in or uh, I'll join your game. We'll, we'll decide. Um, so what we'll do first, as always, is we'll go to the tower and then we'll do some admin. And then after that, we'll decide on what activities we'll be seeing today. What I do need to tell you, my friends, is that I've been running the stream for the third consecutive month and I will have a break towards the end of this month. So during the break, I will not be doing any broadcasts uh, live on Twitch, but there will be other communication on other platforms during that period. It will be coinciding with the uh, um, with the uh, um, showcase and uh, uh, I'm actually traveling on the 22nd so I will be watching the showcase unfortunately not on my perfect setup but um, probably on my tablet whilst traveling and uh, um, I'll update you on the details and maybe I'll run a short stream or maybe do a podcast or so um, then obviously we'll resume as, as uh, a usual once I get back so I just thought I should mention it fairly early as a lot of people come here every day knowing that the session is going to be there which is what we had with degree of regularity for quite some time 
as a streamer. So that's you know quite lengthy. And uh, I wish I would have done some streaming even prior to uh, 2018, but uh, practically due to the relocation and uh, you know inability to access faster internet speeds and all this, this was not really possible. And as you've seen, I still struggled during uh, uh, the period of uh, well almost five years really. Um, just recently, I was able to remedy some of the issues and still not perfect you know the 4G internet speed is all right but it doesn't give us the quality that we want but the arrival of 5G internet and 5G signal in my immediate um, in my area is more or less imminent so we should be with you know what I've never seen this before I've never seen this before like I've been here a million times and I've never seen I've never seen what's written in there. Well, that's extraordinary, isn't it? You learn something every single day. And you can see there's a uh, destiny sign and attribute prognatorum. Well, I'm not really that well versed in Latin, so if you, my friends, are at home with it, you'd be able to tell me exactly uh, what that means. Anyway, uh, what I said was uh, uh, I've had problems with. Uh, speeds and hopefully once we get 5G which is more or less imminent within the next couple of months I should be able to have a even better quality resolution. Uh, 5G internet speeds are very very good and they should not have the same degree of latency and to what we're having now with uh, 4G. Anyway we can see still it's good to see that everything is already a lot better compared to the past and uh, and also be very grateful to our community members for their patience with the poor picture quality and all the interferences. Uh, but on the other hand, it's it's not that uncommon. We've seen that with lots of different I mean, I live in a very urban area. I live in a city and uh, I'm boggling that in Britain we can't be having fiber. But anyway, I told you many times about it, so I won't really uh, go back to that. Um, right, so let's just see what we need to do there admin-wise. And before I do that, I need to get my glasses. Just back there. All right, my friends, let's see what we've got before us. Um, <coughs> to do a bit of admin, first of all, we need to go to our friend KD. Okay, so we can quickly get rid of that. Yeah, all of that's been sorted the other day. Uh, who else is here? Let me see. Do we see anyone who is a friend? Mm hmm. Master Rahul will give us some money, I think. Oh no, is this thing um, choleric dragon? All right, I've got that one in the vault, I think. Um, so. 
launch uh, grenadier perfect balance yeah I don't really need it used it before extensively it's quite a good one but once you have your galahorn on then everything else is just secondary you don't really uh, hang of Kreuzer the other one <coughs> is that uh, I also use instead <coughs> if I'm not using Galahorn for instance <clears throat> right, so we need to go where? Lakshmi, I think. Uh, should be able to increase my reputation with her. Well, you go back to Destiny 1, Amanda Stitt's great. Together with Kate, one of the most popular characters. Uh, we'll go for weapons. Uh, the Waiting, Strange Coin, Bellicose. We've got all of that. We don't need any of it. Look at it. Bellicose, properly, properly um, masterworked. And what was there? It was this weapon as well? Fusion rifle, which is what I've got in the vault. Don't really need it. Um, I don't need to bother. Okay, so that's all sorted. So what are we going to be doing? I need to get some bounties, I think. There was nothing for me to buy from Zer during the weekend. I had all the items that he had to offer. Looks like one Siva could pick up. Okay. <coughs> Hansen is there. Hello. Probably waiting for somebody to come in. And uh, weekly story missions. Maybe let me think just for a moment. We'll go to orbit first. Before I do that, I'm just curious. You know, I've seen that more than 1,200 um, people had watched that clip. So I'm que curious to see whether there's been change well you see that's doing quite good as well on the other one I've I've placed the discovering um, scorch cannon less than two hours ago already had views so that's quite a few people watching it so you know like I said to you before these clips and reels and shorts are very popular it's the trend at the moment so it's just a fact Just quickly see this. Mm. Yeah, just going up and up, really. Uh, <coughs> going up and up, so that's really amazing, isn't it? The number of people are watching these clips, and then let's see on TikTok. I want to see, I'm curious. Because I'm, um, well, actually, hang on a minute, I'll give you something else. I'll give you the latest one that's very popular at the moment. And I'll put this one here on the chat so you can see it.
that's the one that's the one and it's called discovering scorch cannon I've been given a free pet free pet file disclose online and that's probably in view of me playing yesterday the game so that's really cool quite like the idea excellent I'll pick this up a bit later oh no I want to see this on TikTok that's right I forgot about this bear with us uh, 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 uh. It looks like the diagnostics have not been popping up yet. We'll see what uh, diagnost diagnostics will get later on. So it's a bit too early on TikTok. And let me see on Twitter. It's curious to see what's happened there with that just one positive test. Yeah, I didn't think this would do too well either. some views so it's not bad and then let's see what's happening on Facebook well, it's funny isn't it suddenly we have such versatility really going from one platform to another um, Yeah, they're also being watched there, so that's quite good. Um, so we are getting we are getting a substantial traffic, so that's quite good. So I think we'll we'll probably see some people gravitate and uh, are wanting to be involved with some of our online activities. So that's the uh, you know that's the idea behind it so anyway we'll do some see what's the warm up we have small arms primary weapon damage is favored we have berserk minions of the darkness won't flinch void burn void damage from your sources increased and then heroic enemies appear in greater numbers so let's see what uh, see what's going to bring us like I mentioned earlier I'm supporting a charitable fundraiser and I'm supporting Mind, the charity that's based in the UK, uh, the charity that works with people who are experiencing mental health issues or emotional difficulties and they definitely need our support and help. So just make sure that you click on the link which is pinned to the top of the chat and uh, read a bit about it. And if you decide to be involved or you want to help us or you want to donate, just click on the link which is on that page and you'll get all the information. You can donate really as much or as little as you want. You can adjust the amount and uh, uh, most importantly uh, the information you have on the page also is giving you um, uh, the full view of our stream. So you can be viewing the stream from the page and that is going to be uh, um, not using as much bandwidth compared to what you get on Twitch app. So definitely worth keeping the link purely for the uh, uh, purpose of saving your internet allowance if you're watching or with you here through your mobile operator. And as I said, you can donate as much as little as you want. All the revenue will be going directly to mine through Tiltify. Tiltify is the platform that is making it possible. Um, so just, just keep it in mind that uh, there are lots of people out there who are less fortunate than ourselves. People who do need our support, people who do need um, reassurance and sometimes professional services. And that is exactly I want to support these extra uh, financial and human resources. And that means more services for people who are in the need. Yep. 
What you've seen was my sleeper simulant that I left in there since the prisoner failed us, and uh, um, sleeper simulant was helping me eliminate those nasty wizards, which are always there. When you do prisoner file this, it's very easy to um, get eliminated by the wizards. So sleep simon and deals with them immediately. Same precision kills as well, in addition to everything else. How many people have we got here? Just one or two? Hmm, okay. Ah! What? Still there. Yeah, our friends there. So we'll go there and deal with whatever comes our way. I've got yet again to use my synth, which is what happens to me frequently. I'm saying to everyone, you must remember to use your synth, but actually, I forget to do that. <coughs> Destroyed. <clears throat> Looks like we have a two piece in here, not a three piece. Ah, got killed by some vandal right at the top. Ah. Can use a Galloth one, friend. You can just blow them all to pieces. So. Thank you, thank you. This is what I like to see. Um, hang on. Do we not need to go there? We do, yeah. That's the last node. Security protocols are clear and hackable. Yep, that's fine. Push forward, Guardian. Yeah, gone the wrong way. Right to the back room. Have your resistance in there. Watch out. Okay. I think probably I'm full. Yeah. Didn't have to take any of it. Oh, we've got somebody else joining us now, Ricardo. Right. Ah. 
Oh no, I missed it. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Just bounced off. I keep forgetting that in Destiny 1 we can't grapple, you know, it's a bit silly. Should have really kept it in mind. Crouching, I think, more than anything else. You know what to do, Guardian. Find those nodes, unload on Oh, we all died. Why? <laughs> That's weird. I'm pinging new SIBA energy spikes below us. Multiple nodes. All powering another barrier, but I can't nail down the sporadic. You know what to do, Guardian. Find those nodes, unload on them, and keep moving. Our friend's quite eager, we'll just let him get on, right? my secondary no. looks like the splashes have taken this hatchery the high bioorganic architecture is still intact but there are microbursts of SIVA activity all around us used to be the fallen would attack for resources for survival revenge to invade a hive nest like this SIVA's changed them all right, still getting strong SIVA readings. There must be another node. Stuck on a chair there. Boo. You're all that stands between the Splicer's High Priest and whatever mad science he's cooking up down there. And this. Now just let me get on with it. <laughs> I want to this sit on his head. Did you find the high priest? Yeah, we'll wait for our friends to join us. We're not gonna do anything Let's before they come in. Look at that thing. We'll just wait for the third person as well. I wonder what they're willing to do to us. Sounds like you're about to find out. Eyes up, Guardian. Yeah, 
that's my fault actually. I just attacked him head on, you know. Should have just uh, left it. Where's it gone? Oh, go away! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, again? That's annoying. Ogre got me. Man, I'm dying quite a few times in here. Um, thank you. Maximum team effort, that's a good C. It's really good. And there's silly ogres on my tail. He just kills me immediately. There's a glitch that just looks at me and I'm dead. Ah, that's not very good for me, is it? I'm get hit by something, somewhere. Ah, oh, gonna. What was that? What a mess. The high priest wasn't looking to I'll pick that part back at the end, but that's good. Their body parts to be joined with Siva. Bioengineering's become the splicer's main MO. We're lucky to have dropped their high priest to perfect the oh US madness, but got that. it's got to make you wonder. This pick up some extra skeleton keys. I got that. Yeah, okay. Take one. Devil's Dawn, yeah, okay. Ah, oh, it's not really too exciting, is it? Ah!
Let us see if our friends will stay with us for another strike. Ah, we've got this one completed. That one completed. So, a couple of engrams. Performing good deeds. I completed that. I've done so many of those good deeds. They're just registered. Quite weird. It's taken so long. I shouldn't have done. Well, this time around, I'm not going to be uh, doing anything as forward. The House of Devils marked you as public enemy number one after you trashed their prime servitor, but your old friend Sepix Prime is back. Sepix. How many times did I play that Sepix? Many, many times. What you're saying is it's time. I'm sure the Fallen will be happy to see us. The new and improved Sepix is holed up in the Devil's Lair. You know what to do. Loads of these. They're not really necessary, but never mind. We'll do them all. are still holding ground in the refinery, but I'm also tracking multiple SIVA energy signatures. Well, that's new. I got me that last night. Yep, that's right.
we've got major hive reinforcements inbound. Good luck. That rocket got me somewhere. Ridiculous. Thank you. The ammunition used it all, but guess what? I've got loads of sense. I bought loads of these up there. So that's all been done and dusted. Sepix will be next. Hate that Sepix. That's it, just about right. You, a sea of devils and an angry machine god waiting on the other side. I'd say lock and load, but I'm sure you already did. Oh, I'm stuck in there. I saw friends, that was my fault. I see the offering, we've got one. All right. Who's up there? Oh, he was up there. Oh, I've been got hit. Okay. Why would the splicers rebuild seven? They already have Siva. I can make a guess. Maybe an offer to the other devils. A show of power. What? Trust and it's I hate that Vandal in there. 
causing us all this trouble. Sepix perfected in all his glory, indeed, but we are going to be destroying that glory. Have I got any more? Probably not yet. Oh, I can. Okay, good. That's it. Sepix gone. Sepix was the splicer's next big play. Present a god for all the worship. Then control the flow of ether to control the house. I guess they didn't factor us into the plan. So did we complete Any another bounty? No, we did not. You make one hell of a wrench. Was, uh, okay. We'll stay in there for a few more sievers and then we'll go to the uh, Iron Temple. We need to get some s admin sorted in there. Very quiet today again and not many people coming in to talk to us live and don't know why that had well, last week we had a couple of days with uh, quieter sessions, we'll see. Well, people got to do other things in addition to uh, playing Destiny <laughs> and watching Twitch streams, that's the fact. Hmm.
guess our friends had enough there. We had a three piece, but uh, usually people do two or three, see us to warm up, and then they move on to other activities. Something has begun to repair the schism torn by its destruction. Vex now flood the garden channels to protect it. Garden and begin to summon back its heart. Black Garden. And yeah, also would make just me. go to the other one, which is at the back. Whether my super did any good in there. Oh, it looks like it did, did look good.
let's see here. Come on, that's ridiculous. The rocket still managed to find me. Rockets need to be neutralized with my primary weapon, which is why I forgot. This one first, I think. This is a bit odd. So where's he gone? Like two bounties I completed in there, so that's not too bad. Okay, that was that was close. Fair. Oh, go away. Why was he not tethered? Odd. Oh, 
third time lucky, right? Got to be. Costing me. Ah, well. I like this place better when it's dead. <laughs> hmm. Ah, Miss Cute. Why is he not gone? Finally. Taking, oh, can't believe it. But need to race another minute then with my dark drink, huh? Team score, what team? There's no team in here. forever to disappear.
another rocket from somewhere. So we're finally getting somebody in here, which is good. Oh, can't hold any. Couldn't really pull out my um, fusion rifle quick enough. <clears throat> Got me there. And now we got a three piece, which is good, soothing compared to what we had earlier. Jinx and Lucky, that's a very good user idea, isn't it? Or game attack. Could have disappeared. The whole lot of them. Cursor got me, but uh, I think they should have been all long gone.
I've got like it's too many um, minerals in there. Our friends are eager to get to the boss, but uh, you know, we'll all get there in good time. Well, Galahorn needs to be put on for this one. And another synth needs to be also used. <coughs> so we got plenty of uh, ammunition for the boss. Stuck in there. Got stuck in there. Uh, don't know what it was. Thank you. Of ammunition. So you can see.
with another rocket. I've got it. Tricky, just wait for a second. Hide in there. Well, thank you. That worked. Should be dead. Ah. Blue polyphage picked up some of those materials. Um, brutal efficiency, okay. But the Vex will never cease until their birthplace is restored, and we must keep it here until we can see how many binders I completed. If any, oh, two are completed, okay. Strange coin, how many strange coins have I got? Hang on. Uh, 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 uh. 30. Yeah, I need Once he comes back next weekend. But he had nothing really for me this weekend. And I had plenty of... Um, had plenty of uh, uh, synths on me. So there was no need for me to be uh, purchasing it again. Um... Hmm. Let's see if our friends will stay with us for the next strike. Hopefully, maybe, possibly. Yep, that's good. No waiting periods. We're just slotted in straight away as three piece. Maybe we'll get Omnigal. That'd be fun. Anyway, um, anyone who's just joined us, I've uh, been uh, doing some clips of our activities here with our friends and community members, and you can find them on TikTok. You can find them also on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So it's a selection, it's about nine, I think, um, I posted yesterday and today. And every day when we do some activities um, with our members and our friends, we'll do exactly the same. We'll just keep generating these clips telling you what we're actually doing in this arena. If you want to watch it uh, um, full frame, watch them on Twitch or YouTube. If you want to see some uh, um, reels, no, actually YouTube is also reels. So it's on Twitch that will have clips, but um, on all the other ones will be just uh, portrait. It looks like Why do you think they crashed their ship into the dreadnought? what you get on your mobile so phone, right? So it's not full frame. The Vanguard intercepted a signal. But it's been popular. I have to say, I was very surprised that more than uh, 2,000 people already uh, had clips. So that's really pretty good. Ah, uh, that's not good. I need to change the weapon. Keep forgetting. We don't need a Galahorn at the moment. We need our Dark Drinker. And we need some ammunition.
Colossus is here. All right. a bit of fun with some ads down here. Didn't have to stay there, but you know, good fun. Even better picture in here, isn't it? All those uh, aren't enemies wasted in there. Get to the wheel there. Has it exploded? No, I find now they have to order that. Looks like. Good. We are getting somewhere. They need to be stopped. Go careful. Well, no more ads, still some super left, but um full brawler, look at that. Taken and Cabal fighting for the bridge. Wherever the brothers are. Have one clip here. with us Let's fighting those Bond brothers mm. on the reel so you can check them out. Boys on uh, um, YouTube and TikTok.
power of the Brotherhood bond, Guardian. Kind of reminds me of Mean Zavala. Less yelling, of course. a lot of Cabal explosives hooked up to the Dreadnought core. There are munitions hooked up to each structural weakness on the core. All the brothers are here! Take them out! More ammunition. Oh, why did it go there? Targets are neutralized. Somewhere, an awful Some Imperial flunky is getting a message. Word that these brothers are dead and they have no more ranking soldiers in our system. Alright, so that's enough of our Sivas for today, I think. Um, we'll depart from the strikes. And go back to the tower, do a bit of admin. And then we'll decide on what to do next.
generally what we do is spin a court weekly activities that's usually what uh, we tend to be doing increasing intellect I like that helmet though I've got to say inverse shadow and second thoughts so it's increasing super energy which will help so we have one legendary engram I'll keep the rest and we'll oh two even all right visit our friend Master Rahul yeah that was the one I have got uh, her memory yeah that they don't have in the vault all right so let's go to the tower and do a bit of admin oh no actually what we'll do is we'll go to um where is it it's not here iron temple just remember that i had completed one task given to me by tyra so i'll be able to collect that so i'll be very good Just curious to hear from our community members about Assassin's Creed being offered for free this weekend. Wondering whether you guys have been toying with any of the titles, and if so, which ones? Um, I'm playing Valhalla at the moment, so there was no time for anything else. I played it on Saturday and Sunday, and um, always very enjoyable. Massive big open world to explore, Old England in the 9th century, with Eivor. Eivor is the uh, uh, Viking captain and uh, either raiding or coming up with agreements depending on what types of uh, enemies she's facing. Okay, so I'm getting something for Ending strides. Duck annoying me. Duck annoying me. No, that's nothing. None of this is any good. Long tomorrow. So I switch plate. See this cloak I quite like, wood cloak. Vanguard champion, automatic rifle, sniper rifle. Oh. It's always good to remember that some cloaks will have enhanced weapon abilities, so it's important to stick them in if you feel that you're a bit weak or you need some extra power. Yes, I have already completed these bounties. Hang on, what else do I have there? If anything. Playground. Uh, Wrath of the Machine. I wonder where I can get back in with the crucible, I don't know. We have got some stuff with our friend Postmaster and Gabby rather than Katie. What's this? Is it? Oh, Emblem, alright. Okay. So let's just go through the strides and gauntlets and then Raya. High Squidder.
that enough space. All right. Well, that looks tricky. So we'll uh, have to be able to stick some of that in the vault. Brawler's cloak, we've got that one. So we can just get rid of it, that's doubles. And then we'll put one helmet in there, which one? Croyter mask. Hmm. So that's clear for me to uh, do a bit more admin in there with my postmaster friend. I'm not going to bother, I'll delete it. Okay, so that's resolved. Alright, so let me think, what do I do next? Some bounties, maybe? Orbit, then we'll decide what to do next. Well, we we'll try something interesting.
So we'll do weekly story place airborne damage, cause more damage while in the air. Juggler, non mission drops for equipped weapon, heroic enemies are being greater numbers and are more aggressive. Okay, we'll see. Double check weaponry here. I got everything I need. Dark drinker. Alright. And let me see this one. We went to the moon seeking vengeance, but it found us first. Krota, the son of Oryx. We'd never faced anything like him. In the end, only I was left. His armies destroyed our moon. If we don't stop them, I fear Earth will suffer the same fate. Rota. Just when you hear that word Krota, just like sends chills down your spine, doesn't it? Mm, just the one. That's too bad. Need a lot more than one. <laughs> At least eighty. This is a this story mission. Yeah, that's uh Getting in his ability with this uh, new gauntlet to don't touch me, so that's quite useful in here. Nearly, nearly forgot that these are throws are exploding. Is that we've had loads of these with Omnigov as well. See, it, it makes me invisible, so that's very useful. But it's just for a very short while, it's not for long. Krota. Surely there must be another one down here. Maybe not.
Ah, the Blade of Croat is gone. Stark Drinker, and that's also not too bad. Really good. I survived for years in the tunnels under the moon, using the shadows as the hive do. Keep your eyes open. Sardon has fallen. Come see me. There is more to do. The rest of Crota's disciples will not cease until Earth is ready for their master's return. That was easy. I literally just walked through it. But sometimes you want to come across uh, missions like this. Isn't that the fact? I've eaten all my biscuits, so uh, I need to buy a few today when I go shopping after the stream. Um, this one, don't touch me, very useful. Very useful. I like this one as well, Capris thing, but I think this one, taking damage from melee attack makes it briefly invisible. That really helps. Back to weekly story missions. I should have completed a whole lot. Played loads of them already. When am I going to be able to get in? Elimination, supremacy, control. See if anybody comes in. Just curious. I've not done any crucible here in Destiny 1 for some time. And, um, it's always good fun to pop in for a couple of matches. But I don't think we are. Because generally we face this very lengthy queues, and uh, um, it's been like that uh, um, for quite some time. And I'm patient, you know, I can wait here for five minutes or so, but it takes hours before you get in. And that's definitely no fun. As you can see, there's not even one person slotted in. Probably run just a few rooms for many thousands of players who want to come in, and then you're left in a queue. So, yeah, we've seen that many times before. That is of no interest to me. And. to the tower to pick up a few bounties, vanguard bounties maybe, more than save us if we do the other ones. <laughs> but in the story missions is always good fun, revisiting some of those that we've not been doing for quite some time, it's like walking down a memory lane and I always enjoy doing this and every week we get different story missions. The other thing is sometimes uh, these uh, are repetitive, you don't get as many. There have been lots of complaints about that really on um, Reddit, 
about both games and I think that they should be rotating better. That's a believe should be happening. I like the cloak, don't you? Like a proper future war cult cloak. something future will call on just for fun just to have it aligned with our cloak. Um, what did I pick up then? On this one. Yeah, that one's that one is of no use whatsoever. And we'll go there and pick up some bounties. Let's see what else is there for us. Grenade kills. Heavy kills. Take um, that bit. Yeah, maybe I'll just get rid of some of that glimmer. Not a good idea to have too much currency. Right, so back to story missions, methinks. Um, that's pretty. Look at the uh, lovely sunset in there. Take a shot of this once the ship goes. Come on, hurry up. Don't want to miss the uh, opportunity to have the really pretty picture postcard shot. Take lots of screenshots and uh, <clears throat> what I do is I post them on Twitter usually. And we had some on Instagram as well in the past. They represent and immortalize our community based activity here on the channel. So it's always good fun to have quite a few. And uh, um, see, that's a pretty picture. We'll take a screenshot of this. Just saying earlier how beautiful Valhalla is with their day and night cycle and their seasonal cycle, so it's really absolutely extraordinary. One of the best I've seen actually, if I'm to be honest. Day and night cycle are generally quite good in Ubisoft games, Far Cry series as well as uh, uh, um, The Division and uh, Assassin's Creed, they have really uh, that really good texture. Look beautiful. Just really spices up the atmosphere of the game. Seasonal and day and night content really make a huge, huge difference. And sometimes some literally riding into the sunset. Or I'm departing early in the day, dawn break. Ah, looks amazing. Dangerous. Fantastic the colours. And also, if you watch it and you, if you play it on the latest consoles, you get this extra high, ultra high resolution, which is razor sharp. And uh, that gives you really a, a completely different experience of the game. I've got to say, I really, uh, I really love it. I really enjoy it. And the frame rate's very easy on the eye as well. Try to find the source of the interference and stop it. Skolas jamming signals with high servitors. Well, we frequently play that. Advanced warfare. May fool Petra does not fool me. I shall be your guide.
servitor is source of interference. Destroyed the servitor, look at that. Well, good job I purchased all the synths, eh? Otherwise I'd be out of ammunition. Generally in Destiny 1, I'm never out of ammunition. With the uh, kind of as a strike or um, story mission where I literally had no ammunition on the primary. That was really odd. Oh, he's there. See, any time I've been punched, I go invisible. And that's useful. Particularly if you're being punched from behind. Enemies can't see you. So that's pretty good. Nocturia Pikachu is there, becoming our friend and our new community member. Nocturia Pikachu, welcome. Thank you for watching and thank you for wanting to join us and our community. Hope you'll enjoy all of our 
content and everything we do here every day. Um, definitely a very dedicated Destiny community of veterans and gamers. Mind you, have veterans of wars on an apex in here too of the division, but Destiny has been the backbone of everything. So that's the way it's been. Right, so I've got some perks that need to be unlocked. So let's see what these are. Trying to level up some of the extra equipment that I've got there. Um, increase discipline. This is a very good one. Oh, it's kind of cheek. Nope, it's there actually. There. Arc armor. Arc burn defense. So that's master worked. Okay, don't have to do that anymore. Warlocks. All right. uh, 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 uh. All right. So these ones are still leveling up. That's fine. Brandon Pikachu. Ah, oh, that was wrong. Should have not done that. Hang on. Ah, oh, that was wrong. I wanted to do two things go forward and bring in our friend, you know, so that really uh, didn't pay the dividends. So there you are. Remember that if you do the same sort of thing. Nocturia Pikachu, there we are, Nocturia Pikachu. So that's good. Yeah, fabulous. I was just bringing our friend someone who wants to join us after discovering us probably through the reels and uh, um, let me see what do we do here well do that They say it was going to be hard, but they're not really up to anything that would come across as hard. Well, I got killed, but still. A bit tired today, really. I don't uh, um, understand why. I didn't even sleep long enough last night so that's probably the reason. Um. I went out for a lengthy stroll, came back and I couldn't sleep straight away so really um, very unusual for me usually always fall asleep straight away. I really wonder whether there's still the remnants of long coil within me, you know, because from time to time I get this uh, muscular pain and then that degree of alertness, experience in my sleep. It's not insomnia, but it's some sort of weird alertness, which is completely unusual for me. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, we got some ammunition here now. Oh, that's right.
Why was he so strong? King Baron. Got three of these kings in there. Remember this one. Not done it for a little while. ammunition. to eat my words because I say it was that difficult and uh, <laughs> it wasn't that difficult up to this point. He was dead, and why was I then not going ahead? Uh,
as you can see, these uh, captains are really quite difficult, quite powerful, but the rest will be able to do it. Let's say, oh, there's a the third one left. I forgot about him. for my sword, so I'll have to uh, wait for the synth to recharge, because I think probably not rechargeable yet. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so that's easy. That's the another story mission completed. Curious to see whether I uh, managed to get. Yeah, I did actually get one of them. Vanguard reputations up. We'll do maybe uh, one or two more, and then we call it a day for today. So let's see what else the game is going to give us. Well, today's the first day in almost three months that not we've not heard from either Zenith or Gale. So I hope everyone is alive and well, and healthy, and everything else. And uh, we'll definitely look forward to hearing from our friends tomorrow. Another perk unlocked, so that's strength and discipline. Uh, okay. Go back to another. Ah, we completed story missions now. All right, so that's fine. Finally, I think we completed more than five. <laughs> Definitely, I played at least ten last week. Um, Before I earned my post as the queen's emissary. I served her in the Reef Wars. The Silent Fang are assassins, killers, real charmers. During the war, they went after our commanders. They'll do the same to the House of Devils. Variks and I know all their tricks, though. We'll get them.
that was nearly an instant death. Oh, we were doing this the other day, I remember now. Oh, come on, two snipers there. Two separate sides. Um. is going on. Sniper shanks. Very deadly. I wasn't even aiming at the shank. So where did they go? Disappeared. Uh, a sniper right at the top. Okay. No problem. We'll eliminate the snipers first. Hmm. 
bit of a tricky area to approach. Well, my gaunt is very useful in here because I'm becoming invisible every time they try to punch me, so that's good. swarms towards the last bit of um, the activity. All right. We'll go up there, conduct activities from the top rather than down here at the bottom. See, this one's a bit stronger than um, the rest. Here. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Well, I'm good. I'm good. And you? How are you doing today? I'm not seeing you earlier today, so uh, uh, you must have been busy. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm just about to be uh, ending the stream. I'm coming towards the end of uh, um, what's been scheduled for today. Have you had a good day? What was your weekend like? What did you do during the weekend? It's kind of a nice. See, girl says that uh, um, I'm very good and I got the cat. So you must have gone 
come up to Chicago um, to get the cat yesterday to the weekend. That sounds good. Was it the long drive? Why is the captain now? Don't see him. from all sides. Animals trying to snipe at me from the distance. Oh, I got hit by my ship again. Girl says, Yeah, it's been a long trip. Yeah, it's a lengthy drive, isn't it? From Ohio to Illinois. But uh, good to hear that you've got the cat. How, how old is the cat? Is it just a small kitten or is the cat bigger? Two months, so oh, yeah, still uh, a tiny little cat kitten, just like you said. Oh, another one. Well, this is turning out to be a bit tricky, but um, give it another shot, I think. And I guess the, kit the kitten's neutered, right? So you wouldn't be having any danger of uh, suddenly having, like myself, from one cat to four or six. <laughs> There's a sniper in there, where is it? Oh, he's up there, okay. Got him. I actually remember doing this with Sekapoop, we were all kind of always hiding in here, so it's like a good spot and no one could actually come too close to you, instead of being overexposed, which is what I've had in those previous attempts. <sighs> Eventually they're just not many left. Ok, 
Kepler's Quirk is here. Hello, Kepler's Quirk. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being our dedicated community member. Really good to see you. How are you? We had a quiet day today. Not many of our friends popped in. I've had a very interesting community session earlier. Um, but not many people popped in today, so one of those days, you know, hard to tell why. Um, I want to say uh, I'm grateful to, um, is it Kepler Squirk, who's been raiding the channel in there. Um, so that's good, thank you very much for that, appreciate it. Quickly. Yeah, these snipers are deadly. I better watch out. Oh, good courts up in here, look at that. Where's it gone now, the captain? bit tired my friends I have got to take some rest um, so what we'll do is we'll just go back to orbit and then we'll thank everyone for coming today thank you for joining us and thank you for enjoying our stream also for contributing for being our valued community members and participants um, just want to mention to Gail that I've done some clips and the clips are both on Twitch and also on uh, um, TikTok and Instagram. So the clips represent our overall activity and everything we did here. 
uh, recently and I'll be doing these clips uh, on an everyday basis so we'll have every day a few clips that represent all that we do here on my channel so anyone interested just you can watch them in full frame on Twitch or you can go to uh, um, YouTube and um, check out shorts or you can go to uh, TikTok or Facebook or Instagram and all of those clips are there hope you enjoy them hope you find some of that activity of interest hope you are going to be um, contributing with your own clipping of our sessions which is what we used to have a few years back amongst our community members so all right, we've come to the end of uh, our um, broadcast uh, for today so thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for being of our community members we'll be back tomorrow with more action hopefully uh, a few well and uh, I look forward to that uh, on that note uh, I shall tell you that uh, very shortly I'll get ready for my swimming session and then I have an early night I'm feeling a bit tired I've got to say today I uh, didn't sleep too well last night I'm not sure what the reason for that was um, and uh, um, tomorrow everything is going to be as rosy as always so thank you for watching thank you for being here with us today thank you for supporting the channel do remember to donate <coughs> our charitable fundraiser is up and running until the end of the year <clears throat> I'm raising funds for Mind Charity a UK based charity that helps people with mental health problems and emotional difficulties so please do donate generously make sure that the charity is receiving some of your support and contributions they're definitely needed uh, we have many people suffering from many emotional problems in our local communities and uh, um, you know they're dependent on charitable donations therefore we want to be raising as much revenue as possible so remember that top of uh, um, our chat and anyone who is clicking on the link will be able to get all the information that is needed uh, you want to get involved you want to support us you want to volunteer you want to get to know more about mine tiltify myself all of that information is on the link and if you want to donate just you'll get a section on it and you can decide on whatever amount you wish to be uh, providing for the charity so thank you for that and really any form of support, assistance, donations and help will be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you all for watching. I shall see you all tomorrow. Take care.